So guys, today we're going to be talking about my summertime personal survival kit. Now, before we get started, as always guys, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you're not already, because that shows that you guys really like these videos and the channel. Anyways guys, let's get started. So, like I said, today we're going to be talking about my personal survival kit for summer. Now I've done one for winter and of course in the summertime it changes up a little bit and it's a little bit different because of applications and of course temperature. So this is going to be survival or this is going to be summer driven and to basically go over how I use a personal survival kit. Basically these are used whenever I'm away from my backpack or whenever I'm not carrying my backpack as an option. And basically this has everything, or at least most of everything, that I need to have a pretty effective survival situation. Also keep in mind, because this is just a piece of kit that sits on the belt, I usually am running a full-size belt knife and a water bottle with it. So that kind of completes the entire setup, but this is the survival kit. Okay itself. guys, so now let's actually dig into this thing. So this is a full real life in use PSK. So the first thing I have in here is my fishing license and dip knitting permit for Chitna. That's in there. That's basically useless for the survival stuff, but to do everything legally, you have to have licenses and permits. So that's what that is. But digging into the actual kit, First starting off is the knife or the cutlery option and for this I'm choosing the Benchmade 556 uh, Griptilian or Mini Grip and I really like this knife option because it's small when it's folded or it's very small when it's folded but yet it's pretty adequately sized when it's unfolded and it's a very capable field knife. Obviously it is a folder but for most realistic applications of a knife that small it fits into the so the next part of this kit is about 10 feet of paracord this is just green paracord put in a really nice looking actually butterfly bundle and so that is that the next part and of course we're going through the middle section here because I totally forgot to mention but the next part is just some iodine tablets and that is for use with the plastic bags in here of course like I said I generally carry a stainless steel water bottle so I would probably just boil water but that is if I have to use the plastic bags in here which I'll get to in a minute so the next part is a waterproof container full of matches and to keep the matches quiet and from rattling around I have I can get it out of here. I have some quad aught steel wool for extra fire starting capabilities. That stuff will not necessarily light on fire, but it will definitely catch an ember. So I have some additional fire starting stuff with that. As I just mentioned, I also have a handful of plastic bags with a rubber band wrapped around the middle of it. So you guys can see just so I have a few options and these are really handy for catching uh, water or if I need to haul blueberries whatever just a whole bunch of different just a whole bunch of different very useful purposes so lastly in this middle compartment obviously not of the kit but lastly is a bandana pretty neatly folded uh, and of course I carry a bandana because there are millions of uses for them it's very nice for bandaging too and as well as keeping the Sun off of you which is definitely a big thing when you're trying to survive you can also make char cloth with this too and a whole bunch of different awesome things so the next part of this kit we're going into is the front facing pouch there's a pouch on this side and it's this one here this is the fire pouch primarily this has all different fire starting things so the first part is a ferro rod and this is just a blank piece of ferro rod just drilled for a lanyard and I keep a little bit of a lanyard on there uh, just so I can easily draw it out should I need to next part is a UST wet fire and that's really handy especially if things are getting wet and you need a fire tab that will actually light on fire even in very wet conditions the next part is just a small little pellet tin full of char cloth so that is once again very useful for catching an ember easily and getting a fire going 
So the next part I have here is a pretty sizable chunk of chaga. And the reason why I have a chunk of chaga is of course, you guys can obviously tell it's for fire, but also the smoke does a really good job at repelling things like flies and gnats and mosquitoes. So if I don't have any DEET or if I don't have any insect repellent on me and I'm just getting swarmed or I need to just stop for the night, I can burn this and that will help repel insects. So the next part for fire, going back to more of a wet fire kind of thing, is I just have a very small vial here full of magnesium shavings. And this stuff burns very hot, will burn in wet conditions. And once again, it will also take the spark of a ferro rod. So while generally I don't like to carry a bar of magnesium because that requires you to first shave it all down, uh, having a small vial of shavings is actually really handy especially in a survival situation. So the next pouch we're going into is this pouch here. This is the backside pouch. And this just doesn't have, or this doesn't have really any specific things in it. This is more or less the catchment pouch for everything else that doesn't have a good spot. So the first part of it is just a three band-aids. Once again, very quick and easy for bandages. If you cut yourself or scrape yourself, which I've done quite a few times, really super nice and very handy to have just to help cover wounds because when you're moving out there, there's a lot, or when you're moving out in the woods, there's a lot of dirt and a lot of potential for things to get into your wounds. So it's nice to have a quick covering for that. Something else I also might recommend and may integrate are some waterproof band-aids. Generally, I'm not a huge fan of those ones, but the waterproof band-aids are also pretty nice. So the next part in here is a cliff bar. Now you guys will know for a while I was running a Kashi bar in here and Kashi bars are cool too. But the reason why I went over to a Cliff Bar is because they have 250 calories and they taste amazing. I'm a huge fan of Cliff Bars. I might be slightly addicted to them, but I really do love them and they're very good, very filling. And like I said, 250 calories is not bad for a bar that's, you know, pretty small. So the next part runs with another piece I haven't shown yet, but I'm also running a flashlight here. So I'm running a couple triple A's, if they'll stay on this table. I'm running a couple triple A's just for backups if I have to replace the batteries that are in the flashlight currently. So next to that, I have a Fox 40, a Fox Micro. I think it's actually a Fox, yeah, Fox 40 Micro whistle and once again that's for signaling getting attention because this is still a survival situation or potentially could be a survival situation next to those i have some starbucks vias for coffee if i have the opportunity to make some instant coffee that could be very handy next to those i have some zip ties if they actually want to get out of here i have a couple zip ties once again much like the bandana super useful um, and then lastly, to complete the inside of this pal or this kit, I have a Spyderco double stuff for sharpening knives. Once again, generally this is ran uh, on the belt with another belt knife. So having the capacity to sharpen that knife is important, but if nothing else, there's also still this knife that would need sharpening. Then of course, lastly, on the outside is a Streamlight Stylus Pro. Now generally, I am also running a more powerful flashlight on body, but this is more for the kit in case I don't have that flashlight and I need another flashlight because in specific places, even in Alaska, it still does get dark in the winter time, dark enough to the point where you would actually need to have so a So guys, that is the entire kit. That is quite a comprehensive kit. And hopefully you guys have enjoyed taking a look at it. And I do know there's no cover in here, but that is because cover is very hard to effectively put into this setup. I'm probably going to look at a way of possibly doing it, but for now, I don't have any cover in here, but that is for the most part okay because for the most part, you can do a pretty good job at actually finding cover. Anyways, guys, hopefully you've at least learned something and how you guys can model your packs for survival and personal survival. Once again, personal survival kits are always a little bit more dependent on the person and what their personal needs and or wants are. Some people may not want to run things like instant coffee or cliff bars, but you guys should all definitely be running things like ferro rods 
and knives. Anyways, guys, hopefully this has been able to help you, and as always, I'm out.